All right, Republic Four was built in 1961, and that was the third hall that was built. The first hall is Independence Hall. The second, Queen Elizabeth II Hall. Then Republic Hall. But why does Republic Hall play such an important role in that mission? You see, initially this place was what a university college, it wasn't a fully fledged university. But in 1961, that's when it became a university. Okay. And if you look at the architecture of all the other halls, here it's different. Because the top there, the senior common room, where you were doing your biometric, okay, that housed the initial, the first administration. So my office, where I was, that was the office of the vice chancellor at that time. Okay, and the other side was the senior common room. Okay, so um, the first matriculation and the first were all held here in the public hall. So when you are talking about the history of KNUS, now why do you call it the Republic Hall? Because you know, in 1961, that is when we gained what the Republican status. So we call this place Republic Hall, 1st July 1961. That this hall was commissioned actually on 22nd September 1961. The same year, Ghana gained a Republican status. That's why we call it Republic Hall. Okay, are we okay? All right. Now, you know, Katanga Hall, Unity Hall, they are very recent halls. At that time, Republic Hall was at the forefront of student affairs. The students here were very rough, okay? They were always in uh, the confrontation with authority, the students here. So who said that? You know, it's in that same year, that's when, uh, if you do a little bit of history, then they start like the Mongolian Revolution. Okay, so you say, oh, these guys are too rough. They behave like Mongols. So it's because of that fiery nature, that's why they call us Mongols. Okay, named after the Mongolian uh, Republic. Okay, so that's how we call the name Mongols. Then, he said, yes, we were always at the forefront of student affairs. Okay, so we were always what, setting the pace. Okay, so we use the card to set the pace because we always led students on every endeavor they were embarking. So we said, set the pace. So when we said, uh, Mongols, the card when they set the pace. So when I say Mongols, you say, set the pace. Mongols, oh, I don't feel the vibration. Mongols, thank you. All right. So that's how we got the word Mongols, that's why we are called Republic Hall, and our cards were set the peace. Now, if we wanted something to I mean, symbolize that setting of the peace, okay, so it was in 1986, during our first silver duty, that one of the senior tutors, uh, the late professor, Akaka, and so on, okay, he was from the Department of Sports. They sat down, this, the Madonna and the rest of the scattered around. They are his artworks. They sat down and said, how can we get something to symbolize setting the pace? So the management at that time thought and said, okay, the corporate always close at dawn to herald the beginning of a new day. So let's use the symbol of the corporate. Okay, so that corporate is not because uh, the public law was put in. Uh, 1961 during the CPP era. People always mistake it that it's the CPP era. No, it was commissioned in 1986 and we use that to symbolize setting of the peace. So when you come here, that's the meaning of the cocktail. That's why we are called Mongols and so on. So that's just a little bit of history about the whole you are in. Now let's go to your rules. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, you are four in a row. Okay, in my time at the point in that we were one in a room, then two, we were one, one each in a room. I even had an extra room where, where my friends come, I give to them to sleep. The last room was always kept for eye on it. Okay, but unfortunately now we are four in a room and we need to learn how to coexist. It's part of the training process. When you go out to work, you are not going to choose who your boss is, you are not going to choose who your support is, whatever it is, you must. Change your level of temperament. 
Now, in the room, we're speaking about sockets. Let's start from there. On the balconies, that socket is a 15 arm socket. That is high weight. Okay, that's a high current weight. So that is what you use, okay, for your hot plates, okay, and your heavy duty equipment. The one in the room is 13 arms. So that is what you use for uh, charging your phones, iron, and so on. You do not use the one in the room for cooking. Well, that's 13 arms. You can get bent easily. Okay, you use the 15 arm which is on the back. All right. Now, in, in case um, any of these are damaged, there's always a complaint book at the whole assistance office. You come and just write the room number, write the complaints. Okay, we have workmen here, we have plumbers, those ones who just left, we have other artisans, we have a, uh, a carpenter, we have an electrician all here. But the only thing we don't encourage is that when you're not here, they should take your keys and go. So if you are not there, sometimes in the week, it may not be happening only what, on weekends. Okay, but sometimes you also hear so about 8 p.m. so we can handle your um, issues and so on. Apart from writing these complaints, they like the whole tutor said, there's also a, an incident book. Like when you, if you are in the room and something happens, you have to take your room into the hospital. You just write it there so that when the senior tutor reports, he checks it and then he does a follow-up. Okay, to just to ensure that everybody is safe. Now you are giving security tips. And you see, security is a shared responsibility. You have to play your part. You also have to play our part. Okay? What normally happens, which is very unfortunate, is that 90% of burglary we encounter in this hall are not people from outside. They are from within. So you should be careful. Okay? You have people lurking on the floor. The same students, not people from outside. In the night, when you get up, you want to use the washroom. At least try and wake up one of your colleagues to lock up. Because if you go to the washroom, these people are just lurking on the corridors. And they are all your own colleagues. It just pushes the door, sees that, yes, there's a laptop on charge or phones on charge. You are all asleep. The rest of you are asleep. You fix it, and that's all. That's all. Okay? Always uh, try as much as possible also to charge your laptop only when you are going to observe it. When you are going to sleep, you switch it off and pack it. Okay? If you cannot wake any of your roommates up, I think you can lock the door, take the key with you because if someone is inside, I think with the air of the person can open. Okay? Without the key. It's only the person coming from outside. Don't leave the doors open whilst you know that all your other roommates are asleep. All right. And also, see, when you are going out, there are certain places that are like hiding the keys under the carpet or on the window. These are trivial places. Any thief will easily search for your keys. Always come and deposit your keys here at the um, call assistance. Please. Very soon, you'll be given cards like this. Okay. The access control, what you see out there, is an access control. It will be activated. Okay. Now, those in the public hall between the hours of, uh, what do you call it, um, I think 4 a.m. and then, we will tell you the time. We just swipe it, okay, and it will give you access. So anyone who doesn't have an access control card will not be allowed to come into the hall. But then, I want to premise my conversation on two quotes. The first one came from a man who died in the year 1958. He is known by many as the most intelligent person in the history of humanity. His name is Albert Einstein. Einstein wasn't a prophet. Yes, he believed in God, but he wasn't extremely religious. One day he said something and I quote. He said, I look forward to a day that technology will supersede human interaction. And that very day, human beings will all become fools. At the time Einstein was saying this, there were no computers. At the time Einstein was saying this, there were no laptops. At the time Einstein was saying this, there was nothing like social media. At the time Einstein was saying this, there was nothing like phones. At the time he was saying this, we didn't have Zoom. We didn't have Google Meet. 
we met as human beings. We had deep conversations with ourselves. But through the lenses of a prophet, he said that it's possible a time may come that the advancement of technology will supersede human interaction and to get to a point in time where human beings will fall in love with technology more than our fellow human beings. And I'm afraid we are getting to that point in time. It's possible that we have been here for more than a day, or we have been here for a day. But then some of us may not even know the names of our roommates. You see, in the same year 1958, the greatest African writer in my own view, his name is Chino Achibe. He wrote his first book, which has become a book that everyone likes, in, especially those who like politics. The title of the book is Saint for La Paz. He said, a man who calls his kinsmen to feast does not do so to save them from starving. They all have food in their homes. When we gather together in the man, when we gather together in the village moonlight, it is not because there is no moonlight in our homes. Everyone can see it in this compound. We come together because it is good for kinsmen to do so. With the advancement of technology, it's possible that we could have been in our homes and read our various programs. With the advancement of technology, we could have had lectures in our classes, in our own, in our own homes, without coming here. But then, psychologists and sociologists understand the need for us to coexist together. Because when we coexist together, we share each other's burden, and we are able to understand ourselves better. The point I want to strive here is this. We have found ourselves here as students, but today I am proposing to you, I want us to be family. I want you to see the one sitting by your left or right as family, because nobody knows tomorrow. As we sit here, one thing I know for sure is that in the next 20 years, we have future doctors here. In the next 20 years, we have future CEOs here. In the next 20 years, we have future ministers here. And in the next 20 years, possibly, we may have the next president here. In the 21st century, we are told that the greatest currency is not dollar, neither is it pounds. It is not gold, neither is it diamond. The greatest currency in the 21st century is human network. One call can change your life. One call can open doors. One call can bring down obstacles. As the president of the student front, I'm here to encourage you that let's value this opportunity that we have. I mean, I have always been consistent in saying that the Republic Hall is the center of the epicenter. If you look at the geographic location of the halls in campus, you realize the Republic Hall is in the center. That is why when it comes to entertainment, you are in the center. When it comes to academics, you are in the center. When it comes to sports, you are in the center. When it comes to everything, you are in the center. So I want to tell you to why the best war. So to bring my thoughts to a close, all I'm saying, is that dear Mongols, please stay strong. Please do no wrong. Please stay long to where you belong. Because this is here you will see, and here is hallowed ground. God bless you. There must be a lot of questions blushing before you. Some are like, what are you coming to do? What do we do after here? Um, no, okay. When we also came back in first year, we also had those mindsets. But I'm here to ensure you that by the end of your stay in the public hall, you will live here as a beacon of hope. Please and please again, do make sure that you join and involve yourself in all activities of the hall and your life will be transformed. Aside everything, don't do it with your academics, don't do it with your spiritual life. To conclude, we would like to ask you all to be enthusiastic and participative in every program to come. Try to be extraordinary in every case to stand out and shine your way out. With efforts and consistency, you can achieve anything you wish for. At the end of this journey, you are going to have a treasure of memories. Best of luck for the future on this journey of education and success.
welcome once again to a public hall, long live a public hall, long live dangerous, long live Ghana. Thank you.
Yeah, education at its best with entertainment, campus life, high school news, only on high school life. <laughs> high school life.